Lady Charmaine, and my guest today is a mother of four beautiful daughters, and they can all be seen on Lifetime Television's new reality show, Preacher's Daughters. And she's he, she is here today to talk about being a preacher's wife, preacher's daughter, or how can we say it, preacher's ex-wife, and raising beautiful daughters. Help me welcome back to the show, Miss Victoria Koloff to the show. How you doing? I'm doing awesome. Thank you for having me, Lady Charmaine. It's great to be back. I am so glad you're back. You know, been watching the show, and it's so nice to see you and your uh, ex-husband getting along so well. It's so refreshing to see on the show, so I want to make sure you knew that. Well, thank you so much. And also, I got some great questions for you, because on uh, the past two episodes, you did uh, you celebrated your first Halloween. So how was that for you? I was really curious. Um, you know, it was our first I, Halloween party. We we celebrated Halloween many, many years ago, and, and uh, I would take the kids trick-or-treating. But as far as it being the first Halloween party, it went well. I thought it was fun. And um, to me, it was kind of like we were having a costume party that fell on the holiday of Halloween. So um, I, I thought it was great. Everybody had a good time. Now, I noticed at the party, you took a wonderful opportunity to make sure you educated all the kids on venereal <laughs> diseases. So I had to ask you, why did you choose that moment to do this education? <laughs> you know, I I have a really good friend, Andrea, who um, I was talking to her about doing this party. And, and I said, you know, I want to come up with a clever idea since I'm going to have a room full of teenagers. And I don't know what I want to be for Halloween, first of all, for the party. And she said, Let's think about this, and what would be would go with your personality? So I didn't want to take all the credit for it. Um, I'll, I'll blame Andrea for part of it. But we just thought it would be a really cool idea, so the nurse thought that would be perfect. And then um, I did give a little bit of an abstinence speech before I handed them their test, but, of course, there's no way to show everything in a 42-minute in a show. Um, but... I thought it was fun, and you know, I thought everybody would see the humor in it, and some people did. Uh, I don't know about Colby, <laughs> but, but I just thought it'd be something interesting. I wasn't handing out apples and having bobbin for apples, I handed out STDs. <laughs> and I noticed Colby was not happy, and so they ended up TP in the house, but I thought it was so interesting when I saw Colby, when she told you to clean everything up, because it didn't seem like she was too happy. How did you like cleaning up all that toilet paper that they threw around the house? You know, I, I think that what uh, bugged me the most, I think that was the biggest prank on me was her making me, leaving me with a mess, not so much TP in the house. Uh, I couldn't walk out and laugh, which is what I kind of wanted to do, and just go, who TPs their own house, Colby, seriously? But I didn't say that instead. But the biggest prank was her um, sticking me with cleaning it up and then, of course, doing that with her father. So, no, that wasn't a happy moment. We had a little talk about that later off camera. <laughs> I know you did, because I know I would have. I was like, oh, okay, that's another side of Kobe we're seeing on TV. And you, you, one of your daughters had made a comment, which I thought was interesting, as they were preparing for a Halloween and getting costumes and everything. And she was saying how you guys were very... Um, was very strict in, you know, your Christianity. And she had made a comment saying that that was one of the things that tore you and your husband apart. Do you think the same way that she does? I do. I think that that was, um, you know, it's unfortunate to even say that, that after we got saved, it seems that's when our marriage completely changed. And I don't want to throw either one of us under the bus, but um, my upbringing, I grew up as a, I grew up in the Catholic Church. And then I started developing a relationship with Christ when I got saved. And I always felt like having Christ in your life should give you freedom, that there's freedom in Christ and not bondage. And I think that both of us, Nikita and I, had different opinions of what it meant to be saved. And, um, yeah, that's probably where things started changing because I felt like I was judged by who I was. My personality, as everyone can tell by now, is kind of a, I like to have fun. I like to laugh. I guess I might seem strict, but really I think I give a lot more freedom to my girls than it may seem. And so it, it was very different. There's no question that I believe that that's when things changed. That's when it began. Wow, because you were so strict. Is it because you wanted to have a little more fun and he was a little more rigid when it came to Christianity? Uh, absolutely, 100%. Um, yep, and uh, there's no question it was... I mean, I literally was, and not just from, I don't want to say from just Nikita, but the church we attended from, the, it was like this whole group of people, 
him included, telling me no more listening to any music but Christian uh, or no more watching anything that's over G. That's why we had the bonfire. Uh, everything had to go. No more having a glass of wine once in a while. I'm not the one who, who is a big drinker, but once in a while I like a glass of wine, Lady Charmaine, and I don't get drunk. I don't see anything wrong with that. But there were a lot of things that I was I was I uh, felt that I had to change, and I just felt like I was losing who I really was. And I, I think our opinions of what Christianity meant were different. And did you kind of lose some of those things that brought you, you and him together in the first place? You know, when we first got together, we weren't Christians. So our foundation didn't start off with, with God in the first place. And we lived together for uh, about, I don't know, six, eight months before we even got married. I don't think that we started in the right way either. So that was, there's just, it, I, there's a whole list of things that I think brought us to the place of where I finally just decided, um, I'm, I, I honestly, I'm going to die, I'm going to die to who I truly am, and I believe God doesn't want me to give up who He created me to be. And that's when I think that things started going downhill real fast. Wow. What a, what a great story, though. Thank you so much for sharing that part of the story. But I know that you are truly a woman that walks in the Holy Spirit, because when your daughters went to the tattoo shop and you sent that text, what kind of timing was that? That Let was a... Tell you, ladies, I mean, that, that's not TV here. That was not for TV. That happened. I know. That's I what I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I'm telling you, this... I hear so many things about reality TV shows, and people are asking me, "Is is this? Did this really happen? Did this really happen?" Yes, that really happened. So I, I like to think that I'm pretty in tune with the Holy Spirit when it comes to my children, definitely. And I've always had pretty good discernment. I haven't always listened to the Lord's discerning spirit, and that's gotten me into trouble. But um, He definitely speaks to me and gives me that discerning spirit to know which way that I should go or what kind of person that I want to bring into my life. And with my girls, it has, there's been so many times, Lady Charmaine, where they say to me, how did you know that? <laughs> and I just tell them, listen, I got somebody else watching you, not just me. I know that's right. And he will tell on you. <laughs> In case and you didn't will, know. <laughs> when, you have a mother, when you have a parent like they do, not just me, I know that Nikita prays for his girls every day, as I do. And I literally, I, my prayer is, Lord, you know, watch over my girls and father, if there's something I need to know because it's taking them down a path that they shouldn't go, then reveal it to me and just let me be sensitive to it. So that's why you can always tell in the different scenes that have come up when they're trying their best to either surprise me or pull one over on me. I start asking them, what's going on? Mm -hmm. I just know. <laughs> But you are you are so in tune. And it's so funny because you kind of remind me of myself a little bit. My daughters see they can get away with stuff. Mm -mm. I know they think I got eyes in the back of my <laughs> head. But if they really understood the power of the Holy Spirit and he will speak to you. And if you listen, you got to listen. And just like how, you know, you sent the text because you felt something. You sent the text because at that moment they were in the parlor. You said, you better not be getting any tattoos. And that's exactly where they were. And one of your daughters was getting a tattoo at that moment. So I, I thought, I okay. know. Now, it's just the testament of, of God. He's amazing. Now, how do you feel about your daughter's tattoo now? Because I know how you felt on the show. You did not believe in tattoos, and your daughter gave you the meaning behind the tattoo. Now, are you all for tattoos now? I don't want to say I'm all for tattoos. The thing about the tattoo, now, again, one of the things, and I'll be doing my recap of my blog probably sometime today or tomorrow. I always like in my recap to give a little bit more of what we can't. There's just no way to fit into the show. But one of the things that happened also in that scene was when Tawny explained it to me, I, we had a moment where I, I got very emotional and, and told her that it was beautiful and the, the sentiment behind it and the meaning behind it. How can you argue that, Lady Charmaine, when your daughter's telling you, you're the compass of my life, you and the Lord and my sisters and how, much, how important the four of you are to me. And so it'd be very difficult. We live in a different time, and I'm not, I'm not trying to say the Bible's not the same today, yesterday, and forever, but people, we've, I don't want to, I, I will, I won't judge my daughter, nor would I stand right. for anybody else judging her, because let's, let's read more of Leviticus, where it does talk about tattoos, it also talks about the fact that we shouldn't cut our hair, and we shouldn't wear clothing, clothing that are made of two different materials, I mean, there's a lot of things in scripture that, um, 
we could all say, well, all right, so how, how, what do you expect me to do? Look at every label before I buy something. There are so many things that you can take to the extreme. So how do I feel about it today? I pray she doesn't get another one. As a matter of fact, <laughs> after she saw my reaction, she did tell me later on off camera, Mommy, you have my word, that until you're dead, I won't get another <laughs> tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> so, so nice said, put it then, that way. And then I told her I told her Lady Charmaine, I said, Well then it better be a big picture of me on your back. Girl. I know that's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good because Kobe did say she was gonna get one when she turned eighteen. Now she's still down oh, to get a tattoo. God. Yeah, and I loved I, I, hearing that. I, I was like, oh, seriously. And then she, I loved in her interview when she said, "You got two years to talk me out of it, or two years to accept it." Um, you know, I love my girls. What can I say? I love them no matter what. And it, whether I, I, the thing about the tattoo with Tawny is, like it or not, people can say what they want. I don't want my daughter covered in tattoos. I just, I just don't. Um, I, it's something that's permanent that she can't do anything about in five, ten years from now. And she thinks, why did I do that? It's a little late. So uh, that's all. I, 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 you know, I guess that's enough to say about that. Okay. <laughs> now, how do you balance ministry? You have a daughter that's in high school. Of course, you have older daughters as well. How do you balance being a mom and raising daughters, especially a teenager? How do you balance both of those? Um, you know, I think that communication is everything with my relationship with all my girls. And we talk, I would, I would be bet to say at least two or three times a day per, per daughter is either calling me or texting me just to say, Hey mom, hope you're having a good day or Hey babe, what's going on in your day today? Or just a text that says thinking about you and I love you. We are very, very in tune with each other. And, you know, you know, I run two pregnancy centers on top of raising uh, Colby and, and now doing a TV show and a radio show. I'm the director of two crisis pregnancy centers. So that, you know, they create challenges sometimes, but God gets me through it all, Lady Charmaine. He gives me more hours in the day, and he makes sure that they stretch to where I need to get everything done, and I prioritize. And my number one priority is staying in tune with him, and then stand in tune with my girls because I'm single. I don't have anyone in my life right now, and, if, and the only man I'm dating is Jesus. And oh, I like that's Mike. right. <laughs> <laughs> and I love that man. So look here, <laughs> just oh, to let you know, <laughs> he's the only man that's never lied to me, been mean to me, you know, betrayed me. He is the man that has never ever let me down. So I'm just sticking with him. You better <laughs> preach that. If you got somebody that's listening right now that do not know who the Lord Jesus Christ is. Uh, how would you describe him in your life to really encourage someone to have a relationship with him? Oh, no, just asking me that makes me emotional. Um, I have been through so many things in my life. I have experienced pain. I've experienced heartache. I have been, I've experienced judgment on decisions in my past, decisions that I make even now. I mean, that's not ever going to change. And I don't know how anyone does it without him. He is what gets me through every single day. He has he has never left me. He has never forsaken me. He loves me, Lady Charmaine, warts and all, flaws and all. Nobody loves me like Jesus. And I I mean he just he just has my heart hundred percent and I just thank God that he loves a worn like me. Mm. I mean I really do. Wow. So if someone's listening, you got a man that won't cheat on you. He will love you. Nope. He will not hurt you. And he said, you know, with love and kindness, have I drawn thee? So if you don't believe me, you just heard it from Miss Victoria Koloff. Victoria, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show. It's a pleasure having you back on the show. Girl, we, we girlfriends now. You can come back anytime. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anytime you call me, I'd love it. And if you're ever in my area, you better look me up. I sure will. I'll be seeing you in January. That's why I'll be in Nashville in January. So I'll make sure I look you Yay! up. <laughs> and I want to make sure that God bless you and thank you for God. thank you for having me on the show again. It was a pleasure. You're welcome. We want to make sure that everyone tune in Tuesday nights to Lifetime t uh, 10 9 Central and make sure you check out all the families. It's so uh, great to have you on the show again. I look forward to having you back. Thank you. God bless. God bless you too. Bye bye.